It's a foggy morning, but uh, as that fog rolls through the gap up here, it won't be long until the sun burns it off. As a child growing up, I spent some porch time with my grandpa, and we get out after breakfast. The fog would blow up, come up the hill, and go through the gap. It is like a stream of clouds going up the hill. I want to live to be 100 years old. I don't want to live to 100 if I'm, you know, strapped up and have tubes running everywhere and I don't even get out of the bed. But that's my goal, is to live to be at least 100 and uh, stay in fair health. There was a time that I'd carve a spoon the first hour of my day, and that was to clear my head of everything else, focus on that spoon. And while I'm working on the spoon, because I made one yesterday, I'm considering those mortise and tenon joints I'm going to cut. I'm thinking of how I'm going to plane that uh, mantel piece up off top, nice and flat and true, and what my afternoon is going to be like. And that helped me then get my day focused and what was going on, just to have that little meditation of making a spoon first thing in the morning. I got into the woodworking. I helped a guy build a log house. And my purpose was to learn how to build a log house because I wanted a log house of my own. And instead of going to the bank and finding a contractor and doing it the conventional way, I wanted to build it. So I got the skills from him. And in the process, when that job was about finished up, I started to get to feel like I wanted to find a career. I started Smurf Furniture just slabs of logs that were hand hewed out, put legs on them, that was a coffee table. I made a hobby horse. One of the biggest crafts collectors in the world bought my hobby horse and loved it. They wanted more of my furniture. To me, that was a great pat on the back. And I was just beginning. I was a fledgling. I was just, you know, sweating it out and chopping out things and doing what I could with it. When I made the first four dining chairs that I ever made, and sent them out of here, one came back because of a little crack in the top of the post. I'm so glad I still have that chair. Along the way, each time I started to step out of this chair making, something bumped me back into it. And I feel like when I first started doing it, I wanted to do something I felt was worthwhile. You just have so much time allotted to you here. And I wanted to do something I could feel like it was worthwhile with that time. There's different, uh, different parts of my job. It's uh, everything from going into the woods and knowing the right tree. If I were more of a philosopher, I might say waiting for the right tree to speak to me, waiting for to tell me this is, this is the tree you want. I've learned just by looking at the trees and knowing the knots or the turns or twists of the tree and seeing the furniture I want out of it. Going out and getting a hickory bark tree. I go out with the, with the hatchet, the draw knife, pocket knife and get the rolls of hickory bark, cut the sapling, cut it off high so it sprouts back out, you're not killing the tree off. Get to work and the animals decide you're not there hunting them or anything. Before long you look up and there's a groundhog you know, running around doing whatever it does or a coyote will run through or you'll see deer and squirrels. And once you get busy and they kind of get used to you, they go on about their business. All the way through the plant life, uh, today we've seen some great wildflowers that are blooming this time of year. It's, it's just great to be part of and, and see the beauty in the woods and be just a little piece of that. I want it to ring when I hit it. I want to work the parts that, that, that in a way they're singing to me, in a way they are telling me what's going on. That piece of wood is telling me it's a good sound piece of wood and it's going to you know, it's going to work for me. I feel like when I get into a rhythm of work, and anybody that does anything physical, but especially the creative process, that you get into a rhythm in your day. And my grandpa used to say, you know, once you've worked an hour, the other seven go pretty smooth.
you get that rhythm going, you get your psych, psyched up to working. If it's shaving horse work, I'm here, I'm getting the rhythm of taking the side off, this side off, down the middle, flip it over, and getting all those eight sides of that part nice and smooth. I feel like my each chair that I make is a sculpture. I don't uh, try to master the wood. I master the tools that I'm working the wood, but I don't try to master the wood so much. That's one of the trademarks of my work is to have that rung that's got the little turn in it, that's got, that's got the twist or a turn somewhere in it. At least one rung in the chair has got that. And that's a statement saying I'm not mastering this wood, I'm working with this wood. There's joinery techniques that, that I use that I don't have to use glue, screws, or nails. You get everything you need right from the woods that appealed to me that I could have economically vertical business. I don't have to outsource anything. I don't have to go somewhere to get parts. Everything I need is right here in the woods. The independence and the freedom that that offered me was a large, it was a large appeal to, to make me want to learn all I could about this and carry on the tradition of hand carved chairs. There are people starting to value their grandma's chair that's got the hickory bottom in it more. And in the past 40 years, the value of handmade objects is, I feel like it's getting a lot more respect. My grandpa, who was born in 1900, said that uh, when the coal miners come here, it was the best thing that ever happened because a man could work eight or 10 hours a day and get a dollar. Until then, you worked from the time you got out of the bed till you got back in bed so you could be able to eat next week. There was a lot of labor, there was a lot of work in being a subsistence farmer. They owned land, they just didn't own currency. You can't live here without the coal industry being part of your childhood. But my dad worked for 20 years in Stevens Elkhorn coal mine. Oh, my grandfather put in 47 years. Went off to the west. You see the green plots, you see the road every now and then, uh, if you can see the fence lines. And those little dots, a lot of those are cattle. That's uh, some donkeys over there too, they're the coyote stompers. But uh, that's, that's a 30-year-old strip mine, and that was Moonscape for a few years. And as you pan back to the left, back to where, back eastward here, you'll see the forest, uh, the trees, and what it's a little closer to what it's always been like. The folks that own this land are getting more use out of it by raising cows and goats and and having uh, come back to it more than now that it's been strip mined, then these folks who get to, might get their land timbered every 30, 40 years. To me, it's not strip mine evil. It's not uh, tree huggers, you know, being too crazy. It's, there's a lot of gray area in between. There's a lot of, you know, it's not as clear as this pine tree that divides your view of it right now. I live in the hills of eastern Kentucky. Head of a holler, as they describe around here. The top topography is described in terms of hollers, creeks, up the hill, down the hill, up the river, down the river. North and south and east and west are relative, but not so around here because of the hills that we have here, you don't go in a straight line, not like you might out in the flat land where you, the road would go east or west. You go in a general direction that ends up east or west or north or south. But in getting there, you're going all over the place. I've been going to a club in Lexington on Monday nights, TDs. It's a progressive blues club, and I would get up there, and the music's great, but I go to get the dance and hit the dance floor for a while and kind of work that out and meet, you know, new people, but uh, mostly just get there and, you know, get up there and act a fool and, and dance, so. I, I love the moves, I love the action. We get on the dance floor and just cut up. I feel like I'm contributing or I'm part of the music. Almost like a metronome, your feet are going to the beat there's steps that you could do, and you're out there, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up, right with the beat. That feels good. You know, it feels like, well, you're, you're not just hearing the music, you're part of the music, and you're feeling the music. That's what dance does for me, especially the old time mountain dancing. Wood is flowing, and there's a flow to it coming up out of the ground, and how the grain runs may change a different direction, almost like the water does. To think of wood as, as a fluid stuff flowing up out of the ground and just kind of wrapping itself around whatever gets in the way, it's almost like a metaphor to life that you're sure you're going to have trouble, you're going to have things going on. And instead of fighting that when you can, embrace it and go with it.
Don't invite it into your life, but when it's there, deal with it. When it's there, work with it, make it part of it, and go on. I have a blessed life. I feel like I am, you know, every day. Count my blessings, thankful, and wake up every morning thankful for another breath and this beautiful day and this beautiful place because right here is where it's at. So I feel like this is still private and it's like almost undiscovered. And that's, that's good for me, that's, that's okay. When people buy this chair or when people want this chair in their life, they want a little piece of these hills that people love. They want a little piece of that beautiful tree that, that grew out there. And that tree lives on in their house in that chair is the way I look at it. It's not recycled back into the dirt. You know, with any luck at all, that, that tree will be there. That chair is gonna be there. The tree, you know, it may be a 300 year old tree that I, that's, that have another 100 years in it, but because wind blew it down or because uh, road was coming that way or a strip mine, then I could take that tree and turn it into something that's gonna be in people's lives and in their world. We live in a mass produced society. There are people that wanna hang on to things. They wanna hang on to the past. It reminds them of nature. It reminds them of the world, the real world, uh, the original world. Every day I come out here to make these rounds, I wanna do the best I can at it. Just take the time it takes to turn out a good piece of work because that may be the last chair that I make. Every day should be an adventure, should be the last day of your life. In your head, you should be living that like you, tomorrow's not guaranteed to you. And you know, I've, I've heard people say that, but it's good when I can live that. And that's what I want to do is wake up in the morning feeling good, positive outlook, and, and know that it'd be great if I could just have another really nice day.